What's the crack guys? In this video I just want to talk you through my training routine and give you an update on my progress in January 2017. So right now it is February. At the start of January I was 78 kilos. I had been sick over Christmas so I was likely a little bit lighter than that in the middle of that illness and then at the start of January when I was over it I kind of leveled off at 78 kilos. Now I'm 81, 81 and a half kilos in the morning and I've slowly been getting heavier over the period of January. I certainly had a strength loss at the start of January because of the illness over Christmas but at the end of January my strength has certainly returned to where it was and now I feel like I'm actually a little bit stronger than I was pre-Christmas. I also feel that I have a more favorable body composition at the moment because I certainly feel like my waist is a little bit narrower than it was pre-Christmas because the weightlifting belt that I use doesn't feel as tight. Also pre-Christmas I was eating a lot more wheat and I was a lot more stressed. My sleep wasn't as good so all those three factors for me mean more retention of body fat whereas now my sleep is really good. I'm not eating any wheat because wheat aggravates my system and interferes my sleep and my stress levels aren't as high so now I certainly feel that I have less body fat and more muscle mass. 150 test 700 done by myself on my own so motivation levels were fairly average doing that. 1k test time 3 minutes 34 I think but a 1k test time I did it in shuttle so 100 meters out 100 meters back and so on for a kilometer rather than running around in circles so I will add a little bit extra time just having to stop and start each time. I'm a little bit stronger so I'm maxing out at 140 kilo squat all the way down for 4 reps 2 sets. I did try that again though previously uh, two or three days ago and I failed after two but I'm going to give it another shot now next week. Bench press is up to 95 and a half for five reps, probably get six or seven on that if I really had to. Currently I'm doing a mixture of weight training, high intensity, moderate intensity and low intensity and skills work as well. The weight training involves full body workouts about five times a week. Generally I do two to three lower body movements and about four upper body movements on each session. I do power development movements twice a week and I do balance work nearly every single day. My hit training generally consists of using the assault bike or doing a hit session at Fit 100. With the assault bike it's 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off, 8 times, 2 minute rest in between and repeat for 5 total sets. The HIIT training or the circuit training at Fit100 can be anything from 2010, 30, 15, 40, 20. You could be doing 5 rounds, you could be doing 2 rounds or it could be a 5, 10, 15 minute AMRAP. We just use a variety of equipment that changes every day so that's unpredictable as to what it is. So it's a great way to change it up. The low to moderate intensity stuff is generally running with a football. I do one pitch session a week but I try and get in 2 extra runs myself for approximately 20, 25 minutes. Again the intensity has changed so usually it's not just a straight run at a regular pace usually it's one minute on 30 seconds off and during the one minute on I'm working that little bit harder 30 seconds off I'm taking a rest this is something that I need to do more of I need to spend more time running because I'm spending a lot of time on the bike because it's easy it's cold outside uh, you know Ireland is cold whereas I need to spend way more time running because that's what I'll be doing on the pitch in terms of skills work I'm doing one heavy skill session per week but I'm doing a light bit of skills work on a daily basis this is something else that also needs a little bit more work I have set myself some targets in terms of 150s. I want to do a 3k test and a bleep test. I also want to look into my 1k test and set some targets for that. I feel strength wise I'm strong enough. I don't need to be like animal strong uh, to play GA. Whereas if I spend too much time getting strong then it's going to sacrifice fitness. It's going to sacrifice my ability to run. It's going to sacrifice 150s. So I need to be smart. There's like a spectrum of you know endurance work, weight training and football is somewhere in the middle and I need to find the sweet spot. Too much in one way is not a good thing. So with regard to the 150 test, I want to try and hit around 800 in July. Now 800 is so ambitious, it's like ridiculously ambitious. At the moment I'm at 700, again under very little motivation, so doing it by myself, you know, didn't push myself massively, wasn't absolutely knackered after. Based on that score, if I do some incremental kind of increases, by March I want to hit 735, April 755, May 770, June 785 and July 800. The 800 mark is very 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 ambitious the most I've ever got at 760 but unless I set myself targets I'm never going to improve that part of my fitness and I'm going to have to understand that I may have to sacrifice strength in order to improve that in terms of the actual weight training and the routine of your know, weight training high intensity training you know what do I do on a daily basis I really listen to my body so if my legs are absolutely bollocks like they were the other day I won't do too much leg training because you know I'll obviously need to give them a rest so for example the other night I did a leg session I didn't get to bed until like four Four o'clock in the morning. It felt like there was little mice inside my bed shocking me with little electrodes. <laughs> my legs were just so like 
twitchy and tingly and for the following two days they were absolutely knackered I did a very light leg session the following day and then yesterday I actually just rested I didn't do any weights on my legs I did do a hit session but I didn't do any weights and by actually being in tune with my body and listening to my body I'm able to maximize the amount of training I'm able to fit in one thing that I'm very sharply looking out for is a decrease in my performance so I have a load of measures in terms of what I'm doing on the assault bike, what weights I'm lifting. And if I see a decrease in the performance of those, my ability to lift that weight or my ability to produce that performance on whatever it is, then I will take a rest day or maybe even two rest days or change up the exercise. That's so, so important. Another big thing that I'm doing is I'm sleeping really well. I'm actually spending so much time in bed and I'm actually getting such good quality sleep. And part of that is because I'm training really hard, but another part is because I actually need that time in bed to recover and to be able to reproduce what I'm doing on a daily basis. I'm, I, I'm eating really, really well. I'm eating about four, four and a half, even up to 5,000 calories on a daily basis. In the morning, I'm having porridge, a seed mix, honey, and raspberries. And then for the other two to three meals that I'm having in the day, I'm having rice, chicken, vegetables, and coconut oil with a chicken seasoning. That's literally it, that is my diet. I also use grapeseed oil as well. I do break free from that every so often. I have something like a drumstick or Haribo, like candy is kind of my thing I go to. And that stays within 10% of my caloric intake over the period of a week. So it's not every day, it might be once a week. And staying on top of the nutrition side of things is absolutely massive for me because if I let go of the nutrition side of things, my sleep goes to crap and then all my training will go to crap as well. And that's got to do with a lot of allergies and intolerances that I have. 